coronavirus has brought the school year to a screeching halt for millions of students around the globe. G Zero ventured inside Seisen International School in Tokyo, where empty classrooms are the new normal. There will be music going and the kids moving around, but it's completely still and quiet. My name is Colette Rogers, and I am the head of school here at Seisen International School in Tokyo, Japan. And we've been around, this is our 57th year, I believe. Our school, as it has evolved, we have children of all faiths and many nationalities. I believe we have 52 nationalities among the student population at the moment. Our faculty population is like a mini UN as well. We have uh, teachers coming in from all over the world. Japan will close schools nationwide in a bid to control the spread of the virus. I was actually on the phone with another head of school when the announcement came through and that's when everything went into high gear. And I was just sitting there looking at my phone and I heard him say that he was going to close all the schools in the country. So I'm like, whoa, it was just a matter of time. As the students were leaving here on Friday, some of them were so very sad that they couldn't meet their friends and they couldn't connect with their teachers. The students were crying out for their communication with their teachers, so they were already communicating on our online systems, uh, saying they missed them. Even in the online community, you realise that that face-to-face -face connection and, that, and those relationships are really important because this is, this is a new frontier for, for all of us. Um, and there, we do have all of the tools and things like that that we didn't necessarily have in Japan as an international school when the earthquake happened a few years ago. But now we do have things that we can do. We're having them do their daily schedule as usual, but they're doing it from home. How do you feel taking lessons uh, over the computer at home? Um, it's been, I guess, a bit weird. Um, for some of the lessons, it's not too bad because it's just normal discussion, so it feels relatively close to normal. But then for maybe some other classes, like my language class, where we're supposed to be having an oral exam, it's a bit harder to do. There's okay, like one there. so maybe this one right here. So you recognize yeah. that this is a sickle cell. I'm a science teacher, so some people are looking to me to try to explain the difference between viruses and bacterial diseases. Uh, whether masks actually work or not, how come the masks are disappearing, how come there's panic toilet paper buying. Can we distinguish between uh, what we believe is the actual risk to our students and staff versus the perceived risk to students and staff? Families overseas are receiving information through news networks that might not exactly be accurate and they're panicking and you know they're calling or WhatsApping or trying to get in touch with their family members. And you know, we've tried to say to teachers, you know, just please be careful with what you're reading, what you're hearing. The misinformation we're more worried about is students, especially the older ones. You know, they hear about people dying or they hear about, you know, it being contagious. So, and they do, they have to filter that and we have to reach out to parents and, and providing ways to talk to very young students about it. We have students from Japan. We have students from China. We have students who hold passports from all over the world. We're trying to, on the side, help to educate and make sure that people understand that just because someone is a passport holder of a particular area doesn't mean that they, that all of these bans apply to them necessarily. Uh, we're worried a little bit about um, them being by themselves. Um, some, some of them will be by themselves all day. Even though they can see each other in the virtual classroom, um, they're not having that connection. Well, because we have our spring break coming up, can they actually leave Japan and travel? Or is there the risk of the country that they choose to travel to maybe under some sort of a quarantine? Uh, we are talking about as a family if and when we're going to get on international flights anytime soon. So. I hope that we don't have to continue on too much like this because we have other events at school that you know the students are really involved in and again I think that is something that they miss the most. <laughs>